For the last year, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has charmed the pants off Americans. His daily briefings and television program, Cuomo and the COVID, won him an Emmy. Look, all this says to me is that most of mainstream television is such piles of trash that a governor's press briefings, where he spent a portion of it recounting the days of the week, was riveting. Cuomo was also praised for how attractive he is. These fans were labeled Cuomo sexuals. And look, I don't particularly understand why people thought he was that attractive, you know? And look, I, 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 I am an appreciator of beauty in all forms. I'm, I'm not afraid to say that, that a gentleman is, is attractive or, or not. But with, with the Cuomster, I just do not get it. I don't get the Cuomo sexuals. But Andrew Cuomo is not who the press briefings show him to be. In fact, Andrew Cuomo is a neoliberal capitalist that is currently embroiled in scandals. The most recent of these scandals involved the sexual harassment and misconduct allegations levied against the governor by five women, most of whom worked for Cuomo. The women claim that Andrew Cuomo has touched them inappropriately and, and made lewd remarks to them. Aside from the obvious violations of personal space and the governor's refusal to resign and his apologies are making headlines. Now, one of the images circulating around is of Gu Governor Cuomo holding a woman's face in his hands. In the apology edition of Cuomo and the COVID, he claims this is how he and his father, a former New York governor, would greet people to make them feel comfortable. I suppose it's the idea of holding a person's head in your hands to say, hey, I could crush your face with the palm of my hands, but I'm not. You can trust me. I'm fairly certain Mafia Dons look at that and say, whoa, 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 look, that's a bit much, okay? You gotta ask if it's cool to hug or grab a face. You know, if you don't, you're just coming off as a psychopath. But serial killers applaud Governor Cuomo for spreading fear into the hearts of the unworthy with your masculine power. Now, Cuomo goes on to say that he, he was very recently at an event in Queens where he was hugging and kissing other politicians and guests. Um, go uh, Governor, did you... Like, forget that there was a global pandemic being spread by aerosol droplets. I mean, I mean, isn't that what your Emmy-winning show, Cuomo and the COVID, is all about? What about consent? Did these people say it was okay for you to hug and kiss them? Or did you just do it because you assumed that's what it was going to do? That, that, that's what it's going to take to make these people feel comfortable with your presence? Not only is, is he someone who is disrespecting people's personal spaces but apparently that need is making him a super spreader
What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good Wednesday. Middle of the week. Middle of the week. Hope, hopefully it's going pretty well for you guys. Uh, my Wednesday's okay. Uh, and, and I know nobody asked. Maybe you did. I don't know. I can't particularly hear you. I felt like you guys asked. Is that fair? <laughs> is, that, is that a fair thing to do? Uh, but... Uh, my, my Wednesday's all right. I'm, I'm, I wound up staying up a little late, uh, which for me at this point is like one o'clock that used to be like my normal bedtime. Uh, but, but now it's like, I go to bed at one o'clock and I, and I, and I wake up at like seven or eight because that's what my body does. And I, I have a cat now, uh, and I, and I, and I'm just a little tired. So get, get my caffeine on during the stream here. Uh, but, uh, uh, I want to take a moment to say uh, so a couple hellos, Josh Cameron. Uh, I hope if you're still watching, good to see you. You asked a couple questions about, about the little pro uh, Cuomo precursor video. Uh, one something that I uh, recorded uh, a while back, I think back in April when the, when the, fir the story first broke, uh, a lot of people don't get the attraction. I I've talked to a few of my friends and they, and they don't get the attraction to, to that man. Um, but there are a lot of people that are like, he's sexy. Yeah, I don't get it. Uh, and I'm going to answer this question uh, when we get to the segments, uh, which Josh is asking, why is it that all people, uh, all the people the Democrats prop up are always perverts? And if you're a poor person that hangs out with someone, quote, less than you're guilty by association. But in the case of Harvey Weinstein, then it's, quote, how could we have known as a Hillary Clinton quote? Uh, I will answer that question when we get to that segment a little later. We got Holly over, uh, over on the over on the rock fin. Uh, I, I, she's, you're all wrapped up. Uh, I, I I was all wrapped up uh, in that video because I think I had a cold, and um, this room is it's it's a front facing room, so like it faces the front of the house, but it also faces the sun, so it gets very hot very quickly. But it also tended to get cold really quickly, too. Like when the sun sets, it gets kind of chilly in here rather quickly, um, which is which is weird. So in, in the wintertime, it got cold. And I don't th I think I was also like not doing particularly 100 percent at that time. Like you could hear my my nose was all stuffy and stuff, uh, stuffy and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm also terrible at dealing with the cold. In, like I'm, I'm the worst person to be around in the winter because I just complain and bitch the whole time. I just don't deal well with it. I'm from a pretty fucking warm part of the world, you know. And I don't, I don't. I'm a pretty skinny dude. I don't have a body that retains heat. Uh, so the winter time is no bueno for me. The winter time is no bueno for me. Uh, just want to remind a couple people. A couple people uh, <laughs> just want to remind you folks out there watching uh, about a couple of things that are going on. First and foremost, uh, I will be taking a break. I will be taking about two weeks off at the end of this month. It's been a long, uh, probably two, three months <laughs> uh with with changing jobs uh, and sh switching schedules and then dealing with the car. Um, and now with with live shows coming back, that that's added a, a not stress, but it's added a, a, an additional component to my work day. Um, and, you know, I, I am going to need a little bit of a break so I don't burn out on all the things that I'm doing. So the last two weeks of this month, I'm going to be taking a little bit of break. I'm going to go visit my sister. I'm going to go visit a very dear friend, uh, two very dear friends, Jesse and Jason Hard, uh, down in the old Norfolk area. Uh, they're in a wonderful band called Lori Creek. You should go check those folks out. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go see them. Um, and then, uh, and then come back and, and probably take the, the following week to just kind of relax, recoup, do, you know, uh, maybe do a little writing, maybe do a little relaxing reading. I might read, I might read a fucking book. How about that? That's crazy. I never get the time to read. Uh, you know, by the time, uh, because the stuff that I want to read is very much in line with the stuff that I talk about, you know, it's, it's intense sociopolitical, um, you know, uh, topics, ideologies, theories, stuff like that. 
and uh, and I get tired. And at the end of the day, your boy just wants to chill out, you know, smoke a little weed, play a little video games, maybe maybe hang out with some friends. Uh, watch, watch a, watch a television program. But even then, my head keeps going, right? Like I, I, I look for like the sociopolitical component and stuff because it's very difficult for me to turn that side of my brain off. Uh, getting a little bit better about it, but you know, I'm still, I, I, I'm trying to have a little bit more fun and and relax a little bit more in the evening time, rather than constantly being on all the time. Um, so that's part of the reason why I haven't been reading all that much. Uh, I read articles all day. I read stuff, essays and all that kind of stuff all day long. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so a break is going to be coming at the end of the month. I'll probably put out short videos, stuff like that. Uh, I'll be writing a new forkful that I'm excited to, to, uh, put out, um, the, a, a topic that I think is important to talk about that isn't being covered at the moment to shed some light on uh on some of those topics but you know there'll be plenty of videos uh, that uh unfortunately are still uh relevant <laughs> that i put out a couple months ago uh i've said this before is i would love for nothing more than my albums to become irrelevant if the world changed suddenly and people listen to my album and go boy that must have been a crazy time to live through glad everything is better now that would be awesome uh but uh but that is not where we are uh, and speaking of albums, speaking of my hours, I do have uh, tour dates coming up. Pittsburgh, Williamsport, Louisville, Lansing, Detroit, Cleveland, Baltimore. I'm confirming D.C. soon. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of dates coming up, a whole bunch of tickets available right now on my website. Uh, and on the ticket site, uh, I put that up here. There we go. That's the comment. And I got I to gotta rise above the comment here, guys. Uh, but that's the link right there to go snag your tickets. I've got a bunch of virtual shows. I rescheduled the July virtual show. So if that was something that you wanted to come see but weren't able to, I rescheduled that for August 13th. Um, so that's when I'll be I'll be doing that virtual show. So even if you're out on the road, even if you're if you're uh, on vacation or something and you want to check that out, you totally can. So that's the link there. And again, the cities I'm coming to Pittsburgh, Williamsport, Louisville, Lansing, Detroit, uh, Baltimore, um, confirming some other dates, Norfolk. I just added Norfolk. Uh, so for all the Norfolk people, I'm coming, coming down your way in, in November to do a show with, with Lori Creek and tornado bait. So very excited about those shows. Uh, and uh, with all of that said and done, uh, let's dive into our stories. We've got four today. I'm doing a four story day, but, but most of them are kind of short and some of them are recaps uh, and, and kind of updates on some situations. So, so I won't be spending a significantly large chunk of time on some of these stories. So I, I wanted to talk about this. I, I had addressed this very, very early on in the pandemic, um, within the first month of the pandemic, we had seen that the courts had to close and the, the DOJ was basically saying, hey, we're not conducting trials. None of the courts are going to conduct trials. Uh, even virtually, you know, they were like not particularly interested in conducting any trials. Uh, so uh, they shut down. And and I talked about how that kind of left a whole bunch of people in limbo, right? The the folks that are in jail and they have to spend a, a several days or weeks or what have you in jail because they haven't made bail money or they haven't agreed to a plea deal or anything like that. Um, so that has kind of gotten worse. And it's a, again, it leads back to a systemic problem. And the problem is within the system itself. So before the pandemic, this is uh, all of this information that we're now going to talk about is pre pandemic. This is pre March 2020, this was sort of the way that the justice system worked. 94%, 94% uh, of people would uh, plead guilty. They would take the, the, the plea deal that the prosecutors would offer. Uh, and in most of those cases, you're not looking at a, a, something that goes into a trial in front of a jury. It uh, Even if the person is innocent in what they're doing, 94% of 
uh, of cases were pled out and they were pled guilty. That's 6% of the cases that did plead out that said no and pushed it to a trial. And even then, I, I would I would wager to bet that uh, if I was a betting man, I would wager to bet that even then, for the 6% that do claim that they're not guilty, because they very well might be, because in a lot of these circumstances, these are innocent people who are caught in the justice system and they say, well... You know, if we go to trial, there's all of this stuff and it's going to be forever. So it's it's a time it's a time consuming things. Uh, Misty Winston mentions mentioned this when we were talking about Daniel Hale. The process is the punishment. The process is the punishment. And that's what they're doing. The legal system is not set up to work, to uphold the law. It is not set up to 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 to, you know, help the people get justice. That's not what the legal system does. The legal system is there to make a bunch of money and funnel people into the prison industrial complex. And when they take a plea deal, yeah, you know, if it's, uh, let's say it's a robbery case, right? Somebody robbed a convenience store and they think it's it's Joe Schmo from down the street. They have uh, evidence that maybe it, it, it was it was Joe Schmo. You know, uh, he, 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 he quote, fits the description right how many times have we heard that when when it comes to uh when it comes to black people in this country right they quote fit the description so they fit the description they arrest him based on the fact that you know it's it's like these pseudoscience bullshit uh like how they it, well one of the one of the big things was was teeth marks like teeth marks are not actually accurate evidence it's it's like pseudoscience stuff that the criminal justice system uses to put people in prison um I believe Jonathan O'Donnell did a segment on this uh, uh, on Redacted Tonight a few years ago. But um, but yeah, so, you know, they, they use these pseudoscience things. They put you in jail and they give you a bail that's unaffordable, right? Oh, it's $10,000 bail. Uh, and we're going to keep you in, in, in jail until you can talk to a lawyer and maybe the state will offer you some kind of plea deal. So let's say... Uh, and and I'm I'm kind of throwing numbers out here. I'm 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 I don't know what the actual thing for a robbery case is, right? But let's say if it goes to trial, uh, and they do find you guilty, this is something else that they do. Is um, what is it called? It's called trial penalty. I'll I'll talk about that a little bit more. There's a, the, it'll it'll end up becoming a trial penalty, and they'll give you a little bit of a harsher sentence in that case, right? So let's say you you're you're going to get ten years for this robbery if you, if it goes to trial, but if you take this plea deal and say that you're guilty, we'll knock that down to three, um, and then we'll do you know we'll do pr uh, good behavior. You can do some community service to knock those sentences back a little bit. But now you still have a, a guilty charge on your record, even though you're you're innocent. And they don't really do the investigation because, quote, they don't have the funds to do it. Some of these cities, the police departments, the law enforcement, just the law enforcement. For example, New York City gets six billion dollars with that six billion dollars. They are they're really telling me. Six billion dollars means that they don't have the resources available to look into a robbery case and actually do the work. They're telling me six billion dollars can't afford people to actually do the work that cops and the legal system is supposed to do, which is investigate to figure out who actually did the crime. And not only that, you know, so this person is claiming that they're innocent and now the actual robber is still out there probably going to commit another crime. So now the, the criminal justice system is built so that actual criminals can get away with it and people that, quote, fit the description or or meet some other pseudoscience bullshit get away with it. So how is that the justice system? How is that justice for anything? It's not, right? It's, it's, it's not justice for anything at all. Since 1989, this was something that uh, I, this article was found on Consor Consortium News. Uh, since 1989, at least at minimum 580 cases have had to be reevaluated and exonerated. 580 cases? That's fucking crazy. How many of those people spent years in prison? How many of those people, when they got out, couldn't get a job? 
couldn't live in an apartment because they had a criminal record for no reason. You know, they did this to John Kiriakou, too, who was a CIA whistleblower. And they gave him a plea deal, and he had to go to prison. And and now he has that on his record. They, they haven't expunged that. How many of those people are there that served their time for a crime they didn't commit? Amy Klobuchar. Amy Klobuchar did this to a child. To I think it was like a 12 or 13-year-old kid. What did she use? She used uh, paid informants. She said, if if somebody comes out with information about this crime, uh, the police department uh, and 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 the um, uh, attorney general's office will uh, will give you guys a bunch of money. That always leads to problems because it always leads to people that want to come out and just make some shit up. So you can't trust it. You put a financial incentive for information in a financially troubled community. So you know a bunch of people are going to be like, yeah, I, this guy, I don't like this guy. And I knew there was something about him I don't like. And I think he did it. Or are you basing that off of, nope, I have, I don't know. I, I don't like him. So probably, right? You should, th that's a waste of time. And then with that case too, I talked about this like two years ago, but it still it still you know rings true. Is Amy Klobuchar put an innocent black kid in prison for the rest of his life and and basically ruined this kid's life, um, and has never fucking addressed it since, right? And at that same time, she was also helping Derek Chauvin uh, continue to commit assault and murder people uh, while he was a police officer. So she's basically also partly responsible for George Floyd's death. Anyway. Um, the person that did it actually came out and confessed and they were like, that's nice, but we already got a guy and we're not going to change our mind about it because it's going to waste our time. And re uh, but really it's, you don't want to look like a fucking moron, which you kind of are. And it might not be, because it might not be, you, you might not be a moron because you're stupid. You're a moron because you don't want to do the work to fucking actually catch the bad guy because you're not doing that so why do they offer these plea deals right that's a big question that i think everybody wants everybody wants to know why are they offering these plea deals because america lacks attorneys judges courtrooms to try every single criminal case that comes through the through the through the thing so because they're and and why and why would you right why why would you let let's say you're a law student you go through why why are you a law student well I I believe in justice and and I believe that you know um, innocent people should be free and I believe that guilty people should be in prison I, I I I believe in the rule of law and so on and so forth let's say that's that's your that's your belief that's your ideology that's what you want to do and you go to law school and you start learning about all this stuff. And you learn that this is what the prosecution does. And this is what how the system operates. Are you going to want to continue to be a part of that system? No, you're probably going to get discouraged. And you're probably going to get the fuck out of it. So, you know, again, but people will look at it and go, ah, nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody wants to do the dirty work. You think it's all fun? Again? No, nobody wants to be a person that is responsible, either a prosecutor or a defendant and participate in a system that is going to put innocent people behind bars for no fucking reason. And they made an ethical choice not to be a part of that system, and they should not be punished for making ethical choices. Just like whistleblowers shouldn't be punished for making a moral, ethical decision. But again, all of that goes into how broken and corrupt... The, uh, and again, this is a reminder, this is all pre-pandemic shit. So, uh, you know, uh, really, uh, this goes into the, this goes, it, it's not, it's not a, oh, people don't want to work. It's a, people don't want to take part in a system that is so corrupt and broken that just funnels people into the prison industrial complex. Thank you, Joe Biden. So, like I mentioned, this all leads to dramatically lowered sentences, um, and one of the other things that they do is, uh, you know, they'll keep these people in jail. And they'll say, well, if you don't take the plea deal, then we're going to have to keep you in jail. So getting out of jail in and of itself might be part of that plea deal.
and what are they, you know and and a lot of these a lot of these times they're probably in jail uh because they didn't do anything because it was convenient because they fit some pseudoscience bullshit because they quote fit the description right they're not in jail for anything so now post pandemic like i mentioned the uh, court shut down J jury cases were all on hold they weren't they weren't um you know, looking at juried cases all that much. And, you know, a lot of people, and, th and this is, this is something that uh, my, my belief on capitalism is that it's a very opportunistic system uh, that looks for certain things. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 in, in certain cases, it's highly opportunistic. In a lot of other cases, it's, it, it manufactures problems so that it can pretend to solve them. Uh, and, and really, it's just and an manufacturing problems to enrich itself off of those things. So those are the two ways that I see capitalism operating quite often. And, and in this circumstance, this was a uh, opportunistic moment. Uh, people were afraid. People didn't want to go to prison, right? Uh, and and at that and and during the pandemic, uh, the pr pr prisons were uh, a place where people were really concerned about spread. You're, you weren't really getting uh, PPEs or any sort of cleaning uh, done in these places because, again, we don't consider prisoners to be human beings in a capitalist society, which is bullshit, which is, which is by design because they want these people to commit crimes again and go back to prison because that's how the prison industrial complex works and makes money off of prisoners. You know, slave labor. Anyway, uh, so these people were afraid, so the prosecutors would offer them a plea deal. And now they were offering them better plea deals than they would before. So instead of saying, hey, you know, if you take this to trial, you might go to jail for 10, you might go to prison for 10 years. But if you don't go to trial, we'll, we'll you know, do three plus community service and good behavior and blah, blah, blah. Instead of that, they might say, hey, so we can't really send you to prison, but we can do house arrest. How about, you know, X amount of time for house arrest? Uh, and then you have to do community service and you have to go through X, Y, Z. So they were giving more lenient sentences. But again, if you are not guilty, if you didn't commit the crime, then why would you need to go to prison? And, and you're ruining somebody's record because, like I said, prisoners have a hard time getting work. Not only that, but once you go to prison, even, uh, you know, even when you have this criminal record, uh, even if you're uh, uh, reformed and, and you know, it, you, you don't want to commit these crimes anymore and you don't have these urges to do whatever it is they claim that you did. You can't vote. Getting a job is harder. Getting a loan is harder. Getting a, a nice place to live is harder. Society looks down on you. You ruin somebody's life. Just like Amy Klobuchar ruined that kid's life. You think that kid is going to get a be able to get a decent job, go to college, get an education, get his get his childhood back? You think that kid's going to get his fucking childhood back? No. And what these people do by pushing and forcing plea deals uh, onto these people because oh my god, the legal system is so overloaded. Well, that's also uh, a consequence of the fact that there are dumb fucking laws. There are stupid fucking laws that these, you know, roided out cops are trying to enforce. Let's talk about the people that should be in prison. Are the bankers that caused the 08 collapse in prison? No, they got bailed out. They got positive reinforcement for wrecking the economy. Because that's good for capitalism. Because capitalism operates in booms and busts. Killer cops. There's like one. There's probably more than one, but it's not a high number. I would I would say I don't I don't even think it goes into the double digits. But most of them get away. They murdered somebody in cold blood. And they got away with it. They don't get plea deals. They just get away with it. So, you know, the concern now is as we're returning back to the courts, as jury trials are coming, you know, the or rather the ability for jury trials are are coming back. Um, 
people are concerned that these plea deals are going to come back in a higher rate because they don't want they don't want to quote bog down the court system. To me, it's we need a complete transformation of what the justice system is. There are too many dumb laws in place that and, and too many economic uh, laws in place that screw over poor people and put them in this precarious position. I, I would I, I you know, and this might be something that I, 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 I would definitely have to look into and research is uh, people always talk about voter turnout. Right. They always talk about voter turnout. I wonder how much of that is influenced by people going to prison or having some kind of criminal record that makes them in, ineligible to vote. Hence affecting voter turnout. I wonder how much of that. I bet I bet it's a pretty significant number based on how large the prison industrial complex is. All these people are doing is fucking ruining people's lives. And a lot of them are innocent. 508 580 cases had to be exonerated since 1989. That's too many. Too many. It's way too many. I don't give a shit. You want to throw statistics in the... I don't fucking care. Too many innocent people went to prison and had to be exonerated. And and that's not all of them. 580 are just the ones that they caught since 1989. There's still probably tons of them. Let's look at your comments. Holly. Holly says, uh, trial takes time and money. Expert testimony. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, right. But that's also the job of the justice system. So perhaps if... I, I, I look at it as, yes, trials take time and money, but isn't... Like, shouldn't, shouldn't we take the time and the money to try to make sure that we're not putting the wrong person in prison? try to do some investigation, right? Like everybody's obsessed with crime dramas and crime podcasts. So why are they not obsessed with the fact that the justice system doesn't do what any of those crime shows and podcasts say they do? Oh, case in point, the Central Park Five. Yeah, yeah, the Central Park Five. That's another, that's another one. Innocent kids went to prison for absolutely no reason and got their fucking lives ruined. People that are indebted, yeah, Holly points out the indebted from traffic fines and such. Yep, they 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 get their uh, um, they get screwed over. That's an economic punishment. Why why are we being punished for economics? Debtors' prisons are illegal in America. Wouldn't this count as a debtors' prison? We have these laws, right? A lot of people are like, oh, well, we have these antitrust laws. So, you know, we have these kinds of laws to protect people. Yeah, but they're not being enforced. They're not being enforced at all. So how are, how are we supposed to say that justice is actually being served? Because it's not. I want to acknowledge this comment right here. Fuck yeah for Lori Crete and Tornado Bait. Uh Indeed, Aiden, I agree with that. That's I, I just wanted to throw that at the very end there. Um, <laughs> because uh, I agree. Lori, Lori Creek and Tornado Bait, super fucking fun bands, and I'm very excited to come down to Norfolk in November. Uh, and once those tickets are, are, are available, I'll, I'll, I'll blast that out everywhere. You, you, you know that. You know I'll, I'll be talking about it nonstop. Uh, okay. I am very excited about this next story. I'm super fucking excited about this next story, you guys. Uh, it came it came in yesterday late in the day, and I know a couple folks have talked about it already, but I, I wanted to make sure that I, I addressed it because it's a big fucking deal, and I covered this story a whole bunch when, when it was happening. I did a dispatch. I think I talked about it on some live streams, uh, and I've talked a, a, a fuck ton about uh, labor, the labor movement. I've talked a lot about unionization. I've talked a lot about why unions got depowered. Uh, there's tons of videos about that. So if you're unfamiliar with what happened with Amazon earlier this year in Beth Bessemer, Alabama, uh, which is near Birmingham, I believe, uh, the Amazon employees 
wanted to unionize. So so they wanted to look at the uh, retail workers and department store union, the RWDSU. Um, and uh, so Amazon's pretty massively anti-union. They're a corporation in America, uh, post Taft Hartley, which means that they don't believe that unions, uh, you know, and 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 they love to throw some bullshit nonsense out there, like, oh, well, the unions get in the way between the uh, the, the the company and the employees. We want to talk directly with the employees. Really, when when the fuck have you talked to the employees? Name one fucking person that works in that fa factory floor and name their favorite color. I'll wait. I bet you Jeffy B doesn't even know the name of his entire board of directors. I bet you Jeffy B doesn't know uh, if one of the board of directors was out in the middle of the street, he wouldn't be able to recognize them because he doesn't see them as people. He sees them as piles of cash that he can he can take for himself. So what did Jeff Bezos do? Uh, Jeff Bezos pumped uh, the, uh, and this is this is pretty par for the course for most corporations in America at this point. Uh, pumped them full of anti-union propaganda, lies about unions. No, you know a lot of which is not just uh, provably false. Um, and again, the reason why they're allowed to do that is because of Taft Hartley, which was written by two Republicans and passed by a Democrat president. There was a bipartisan attack on the working class. The reason Dwight D. Eisenhower ran as a Republican and not as a Democrat is because uh, Harry Truman refused to undo that. That's why. There was a bipartisan effort to help corporations and, and defang unions and dispower the working class who at that point were gaining a lot of rights. They were gaining a lot of power. And the only reason they got that is because of massive general strike actions led by uh, communists, socialists, and uh, uh, labor organizers. That's why we got, that's, that's, that's why you have all the things you enjoy. You like your weekend? Cool. Thank a socialist for that. Like an eight-hour workday? Great. Thank a communist for that. You like child labor laws? Thank both coast socialists and communists for that. You like the idea of a minimum wage that should go up with the uh, with with the, the you know changing of living costs? Yeah, thank you to socialists and people in the labor movement. Jeff Bezos wants you to work twenty four seven for slave wages. He doesn't give a fuck about you seeing your kids. Look at what happened with the Frito Lay incident. I mean, they still lost. I, I don't think the the union did a good job negotiating for them at all. They they still, the corporation won out in the end. They they still have to work twelve hour shifts. They just can't work twelve hour shifts seven days a week. But you can do six days a week. You got to give them a day off though. What that? What is that? That's fucking nothing. That goes against everything that unions aren't supposed to side with corporations. So. Uh, you know, what happened was uh, the union lost in Bessemer, Alabama, because Jeff Bezos used a bunch of tricks uh, and schemes like a fucking comic book villain to prevent the unionization from happening. He changed traffic lights. He paid the city of Birmingham to change traffic lights so that workers on their way to work don't have time to talk about things in the parking lot. He hired police officers to make sure that after work, people are moving out of the parking lot. And nobody stands around to talk about unions. The one that the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, is uh, is getting them for is having a mailbox where people can put their votes into on the Amazon property, which is not something they're supposed to do. You're supposed to mail it out. The NLRB is supposed to get it and count it. The company should not have anything to do with it. So they swayed the voters. It's like, uh, you know, and, the, and there's a manager watching you vote. So they did voting on site and there's a manager watching you vote. Well, the management probably doesn't want you to unionize considering that they're the ones helping push the anti-union propaganda. You ever have somebody look over your shoulder while you're working? I hate when that shit happens. 
right? As, as a creative person, when I have somebody looking over my shoulder at something I'm writing, or if I'm designing something and they're looking over my shoulder, I hate it. You automatically just forget how to do things when you're being watched like that because you feel like you're being scrutinized. That's the same thing. You don't think that's going to influence people's votes? Not just that, I wonder how many pro-union votes were in that Amazon mailbox that never reached the NLRB. How many people were pro-union but were intimidated by the management staring at them making their votes? The NLRB should have called them out for all of this shit, but they called them out just for that mailbox thing. So now they have to redo it. They didn't, they didn't call out Amazon for being racist towards Chris Malls. That's what Je Jeff Bezos was racist towards Chris Malls. Basically said that he was dumb for, because he's black. Well, I think one of the board members quit over that. Now, uh, I know I've mentioned this in a couple of videos before. Uh, the R RWDSU uh, is a rather corporate union. Right. And 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 that happens. I'm, I, I say this with a preface. I'm not anti-union. Um, I just think that unions that. What needs to happen is the rank and file should be able to push back against the union if the union makes decisions and collectively bargains on behalf of corporations rather than the working class. Uh, if they're making decisions on behalf of um uh, political parties instead of the working class. At that point, the rank and file should get together and form a, a committee, right? Uh, a lot of people have talked about this. Left Voice, World Socialist website. I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, I think that's a great idea, especially when you're dealing with a union that has, uh, you know, gone in with the list of demands and you got none of them. Right? Like, like what happened with Frito-Lay. They didn't get better working conditions. They didn't get better wages. They just got one day off out of the week, which is, wait a minute, that's actually less than what should be granted to you as a working class person in America. That means that the union really didn't do their job. So, so you know, what, 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 what do we do? At that point, when we see news stories like that, uh, and let's say this vote goes through and the NLRB does the right thing. Um, and, and and the union shows up, right? That was another thing that people criticize RWDSU for is where the fuck were you? Why weren't you guys on site? Why weren't you guys canvassing the neighborhood? Why, if, if Amazon isn't, is allowed to do anti-union propaganda during work hours, which means that they these people are off the floor to go watch anti-union propaganda and then have to come back and work twice as hard, which just proves why you fucking need a union, which is which just proves why we need things like the PRO Act, which just proves why we need a general strike because these workers are being taken advantage of and are being constantly exploited. Where was the union to talk about unionization? Fine, you can't talk about unionization in the parking lot because Jeff Bezos has spent millions of dollars changing the traffic lights and hiring Birmingham police uh, to moonlight as uh, uh, hired guns. Okay, what about a bar or something? You get you can't talk to five or six different employees and get a whole bunch of people together at at a at a local bar down the street and talk about that. There's no fucking Panera Bread you can rent out their their little conference center and fucking talk to people about unionization. You can't do a Zoom meeting. C c collect some emails, right? It, it start a start a fucking text chain or something. Get a Zoom meeting. You guys could do any of that. I'm I'm a shitty comedian, and I fucking you know I'm a shithead comic doing this shit out of my bedroom next to a a, a plant in my bed. And I can figure some of this shit out. Why can't the unions? So again, what what can we do? Well, one, if if you see a, a union kind of making decisions on the behalf of the corporation, okay, uh, I think rank and file safety committees, rank and file committees in, in general are, are a great idea. 
But we as consumers should push back against a corporation in the union. We should call out the union and say, hey, why didn't you make this decision on behalf of the workers? They're asking for better pay. They're asking for better condition. They're asking for better hours. They're asking to be treated like a human being. And instead, you got them less rights than they're actually granted. What the fuck? And then we should boycott that company. Like PepsiCo should be boycotted. And there's a lot of shit that PepsiCo makes. But guess what, guys? Uh, Trader Joe's and Aldi have their own brand of shit. And they're far better companies than PepsiCo, Frito-Lay, and, and Amazon. You can go there and buy stuff from a better company. I'm not saying they're perfect, right? But look, I don't buy PepsiCo shit, but I can still get chips, still get decent soda, right, that I can enjoy. You can do that too. Don't shop on Amazon. Try to find the actual retailer's website. If, if you, you know, what, what I use Amazon for is I go and look up the product and I go, okay, this is the company that's doing it. And then I go track their website down and I order shit directly off of their website. That's a way you can boycott it. There's stuff on Amazon Prime that I've wanted to watch, but I, I'm, I'm not. You know, uh, nerd shows that everybody's been telling me to watch, like fucking The Boys and Invincible and... Good omens. I'm, I'm a huge fucking Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett fan. I love that book. I fucking love that book. That's one of the books I did I I, I did read all the way through. And it was on a, on a summer break in, in college when I was in India. I fucking got through that book in a week. It's the fastest book I've ever read. Why? Because it's a really good book. And it's on Amazon. And I, and I still haven't fucking watched it. Because fuck Jeff Bezos. And I'm sorry to Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman and David Tennant. And all the wonderful actors that are on that fucking show. But I'm not going to watch it. Because fuck Amazon. Jeff Bezos doesn't need my 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 clicks and my uh, and and my and my fucking money. Why? So he can fucking take another ride around the stratosphere in his dick rocket? No thanks. When the unions start backing corporations and political parties, we the people, even if we're not in the union, um we need to stand by and stand in solidarity with those workers. And a great and a really easy way of doing that is just boycotting these corporations and saying, no, look, I'll even put it this way. You don't you don't have to cancel your prime subscription. Yeah. You don't have to cancel your prime subscription. Just stop buying shit from Amazon. Find a different way to do it. It takes a little bit of effort, yes, but don't you think it's worth it that your little bit of effort to find a different way to get your shit means that some other that, that a working class person that works in the Amazon warehouse is one step closer to being treated like a goddamn human being? I think it's worth it. The last thing I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to, you know, jump into the comments here. I'm going to reiterate this point because it's really, really fucking important. Unions are meant to collectively bargain and stand in solidarity with the working class. They are supposed to represent the working class, not corporations or political parties. Period. Hayden says you can borrow my Good Omens Blu-ray. You you are uh, an, an incredibly kind person, sir, and I appreciate that. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, you 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 are a delightful human being. Thank you, Hayden. That's that's very kind of you to offer. Uh, Holly says Chris Smalls is making a union of Amazon employees. I I did hear that. I did hear that. Um, I haven't really seen a lot of traction on that story, though. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I can. I, I, that's something that I need to uh, need to look into. Uh, and then Holly points out, uh, not well done by the retail union, actually, uh, and business unions. Yeah, uh, 
yeah, the the retail unions are are they they have they have a, a tendency and a pattern to s- side with the corporation that they're negotiating with, and they end up you know again it's like the free delay thing. I was really really fucking disappointed to see that decision, really really disappointed. Uh, you know, a- and if if Americans knew that countries in Europe have a a, a twenty eight hour work week, and uh, that includes like mid afternoon breaks and maternity paternity leave universal health care and those countries are not falling apart as america would cl- in fact america does a lot of business with those countries i think they would change their mind on a lot of this stuff again it's the education people just don't have an education you you, you brought holly brings up labor history uh if you look into labor history it's very it's very very easy to see uh the the failures in capitalism and why we need to stand with the working class in America. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping that they unionize, man. I really do. I I'm, I really hope that the vote goes through, and I really hope this time around, uh, old Jeffy B isn't uh, allowed to do the bullshit that he does. All right, uh, let's go to this one. This one's a pretty quick. This is going to be a really quick one. Uh, this is sort of an update to the a lot of the critical race theory stuff that I've done and uh, boy howdy I can't wait for the comments on this video because you know there's going to be a bunch of shitheads that'll show that'll show up uh and and throw down some some comments justifying fucking uh I- ignoring the true history of America uh that 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 that's going to be fun uh but I'm going to share this this is this is about a maybe uh, just about a week old uh but I but I think it Again, it kind of starts debunking some of the things that people say in the comment sections. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear it. Uh, if you can't, leave a comment that you can't hear it. Here we go. That's a fucking commercial. Son of a bitch. Ugh, I'm going to talk over this commercial because you know what? Fuck you. I don't need a, I didn't. I didn't ask for a goddamn commercial to be played on my live stream. That is not what I wanted. Earlier today, NWA educators got together to rally for honest history. This comes as lawmakers in multiple states attempt to pass legislation that would ban schools from teaching concepts like racism and sexism. The protesters say they're concerned after they heard that the Arkansas Secretary of Education wanted to make changes to the state's curriculum in response to those critics. We didn't know anything about the Tulsa massacre. We didn't know about the Elaine massacre here in Arkansas back in 1919. We didn't know about the Rosewood massacre back in, in, in Florida in 1923. But how great of a country are we if those mistakes aren't being taught, much less acknowledged? Well, the rally was purposely held at a former whites-only migrant farmer camp in Springdale. That's on Applegate Road. A few of the original buildings are still there. Excuse me. Uh, sorry, that was gross. Uh, so there you go. Ah. I had to get out of that website real quick. Uh, <laughs> sorry if you guys got the, a little bit of that last one. So there you go. You know, teachers want to teach the truth. That's what they want to do. Um, some of the stuff that he mentioned, the Elaine massacre, the, the massacre in Florida, I didn't know about. So it's some stuff that now I have to learn and and teach myself as well. Uh, I didn't know about Tulsa. Uh, I'd, I'd heard about some of that stuff. I'd, I'd, I'd known about the existence of Black Wall Street. Uh, but what what is what does that show, right? Uh, one of the big proponents uh, for that's that's a that's a kind of a pro capitalist argument, using using uh, sort of the progress we've made through race is well we have a lot of billionaires, and millionaires who are black. Isn't that cool? No, it isn't cool. I don't want to see more billionaires. I don't want to see more millionaires in this, regardless of what their skin color is. Black Wall Street, when you look at Tulsa, what that really teaches us is that there was no real um, intention for America to include black people in this system. And so black people found a way to be a part of this system. And, and, and the rich white people didn't want that. So what did they do? Over a rumor, they galvanized a bunch of poor white people and they said, those people have your money. Not no, we're trying to give you more money and they're getting in the way of it. And they sowed the divide and they went and burnt this fucking prosperous black community down. 
for what? And and this is stuff that they don't want to teach to kids. Why? Because it will show that capitalism does not want black people to be involved in their system. Especially if they do it uh, in, a, in a way that's not approved by capitalists. If it's outside the paradigm of what capitalists say it should be. That's what it was. To say it doesn't exist, I mean, it's a major falsehood. Just because, you know, and, and this is the thing, is that people want to people get credit for um, b b just b basic human rights, right? Uh, I, I have people that make the argument, I have friends that make the argument of, well, things are better. You know, black people and white people can sit in the same restaurant together. Oh, good. Are we giving points for some shit that should have been normalized from the get-go? That's breadcrumbing. That's what it's called. Uh, in, in psychology, breadcrumbing is, is the term that's used when abusers gaslight their victims. That's kind of what that is. It's like when people say, well, Joe Biden's not as bad as Trump. Oh, what an achievement. I have fungus on my toe that's not as bad as Trump. Honestly, the fungus on my toe... I don't have fungus on my toe. Just I'm using that as a argument. Uh, but if I did have fungus on my toe, it would be better than Trump and Biden uh, because that fungus uh, never started a war. That uh, it fucking didn't need to. But it, but it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous for you to say. And then you know, for the people to say that they're not going to be able to comprehend it is also ridiculous. That shows that that you know, for, again, it's it's this it's this contradiction to American exceptionalism. Because if you are going to sit there and say that America is the most exceptional country in the whole fucking world, but all of a sudden your kids can't handle the truth, is insanity, and it doesn't fucking make sense. And again, most of these kids are going through racism in their schools because perhaps the parents of some of their other uh, some of their classmates are racist and they've indoctrinated them into the system. And there's nothing in, in their education system that's pulling them out. It's not teaching them critical thinking. So they can experience racism, but they can't learn about it. They can experience sexism, but they can't learn about it. It's an it's a it's a fallacy. It doesn't make sense. And then there are people that will straight up deny it. This never happened. Prove it. All you need to do is take the fucking blinders off your head and you can see the racism, the sexism, the oppression of, of minority communities in this country. Just take the blinders off. It's not that hard. There are, and, and there are educators fighting for this now. There are educators on the street in a southern state, which uh, Arkansas, again, is another state that wants to get rid of this sort of stuff. They want to control education. And they're openly saying that they want to indoctrinate kids with, with falsehoods and propaganda. That's what this is. This is a confession. Texas doing it. Texas wanting to get rid of MLK, Civil War, the, uh, the, the women's suffrage movement is just them confessing, coming out outright and very boldly saying that they want to indoctrinate kids with with propaganda that is going to make them good, good little workers for capitalism so that so that we don't see people out on the streets. So that you don't learn what activism and organ organizing is. So good. I'm glad these these teachers are pushing back, and I and I hope to see uh, a lot more of that, a lot more of that. I would I would I would love to see teachers from other states, uh, you know, launch some solidarity strikes with those with with the Arkansas teachers. We need a total revision of how history is taught in schools and what history is taught in schools. Because it is a very Anglo-Saxon, white version of history. And you can sit there and say, well, history is taught by the winners. Yeah. And winners tend to fucking embellish and lie. Have you, have you heard somebody talk about a fight they were in? 
And this is this is it's, this is not like an over the top analogy, considering most of American history has been steeped in warfare, both domestically and internationally. We have been we're constantly at war in this country. That's why we have a war economy. Our economy runs on constantly waging wars in parts of the world that we don't need to be in so we can steal other people's resources. That's how this country was fucking formed. And we just took it to do it on a global scale. That's why it's 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 taught that way. So all of that shit can be justified. That's why we have that. Let's look at your comments real quick. Uh, Aiden says that's some Steven Pinker bullshit. Uh, which which statement? Uh, I've I've heard so there's some stuff that Steven Pinker says, and I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, I I think you're on the money. And then there's some stuff that he said where I'm like, where the fuck does this come from? Right? I think when you're uh, Steven Pinker, Jordan Peterson, these are people that when you just start learning about like. So uh, sociology and psychology, basic intro level stuff, they're uh, they're they're good for, right? Uh, the oh, it's the it's it's better now kind of crap. Yeah, you know, I I use that as an argument um, when ah, fucking years ago, uh, talking about the about like media manipulation uh, and the police brutality crisis and stuff. Like I I I I use that as sort of the 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 jumping off point. To, to make my argument and yes in in certain in certain cases things are better but in a lot of cases they're not just because a couple things got incrementally better doesn't mean that there is there isn't vast amounts of injustices across the world right and i and i agree with you it, it, that that notion I, I again on a basic rudimentary introductory level you can use this as an argument and talk about it but then once you start delving into it you realize that just because a couple things are better doesn't mean that the world isn't still kind of dealing with the same problems it was dealing with 100 years ago. Look at the way unions are being treated. Look at the way fucking strikers are being treated in this country. Look at the way Black Lives Matter protesters are being treated in this country. And then go back 100 years, look at the, the Battle for Blair Mountain, look at Seattle 1919, look at Winnipeg 1919. Look at all of the general strikes in 1934. Look at what happened in the 20s. They're kind of identical. So yeah, it, some things are better. I mean, we're able to communicate through... I, I'm, I'm six, seven hours away from Aiden, and I can still talk to him. That's really cool. Does that mean that racism is over? Does that mean that sexism is over? Absolutely not. And in the case of technology, since I, I brought that up, but in the case of technology, technology is now being used more or less to oppress more people. Look at the problems we're having with censorship. Look at the problems we're having with people getting demonetized. That's economic censorship. So I agree with you, a a Aiden. You know, it's it, it, th those folks, those social science, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, Pink Pinker's a sociologist. I know Jordan Peterson claims that he's a psychologist. They're all fine for basic surface level introductory stuff. For a 14 year old to say, hey, you know, you, you, your, your mind might be less cluttered if your room is less cluttered, if the environment you're working in is less, less cluttered great introductory psychological stuff for 14 year olds to learn but now you have to build off of that and usually when you build off of that the the more individualistic person will tell you to go inward where the less individualistic person would say yes you need time to take for yourself and do what's good for you but you should also learn other people's perspectives and be able to respect other people's boundaries and stuff like that too and learn how what other people's experiences are and again, that's where the teachers come back in to teach the true history of this country. Good point, Aiden. Holly points out that it's an important con conversation and information. I appreciate that. Thank. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. That's exactly what this is. Okay, uh, let's get into the last portion uh, of our uh, of our stream here, and I don't think this statement should come as any surprise to anybody that watches anything that I do. Uh, I think the Democratic Party is dead. I mean, the Republican Party died f a couple years ago when they were forced to coronate Trump and then justify it 
you know, uh, in the 90s, Joe Biden and, and the Clintons pushed the Democrats further to the right and then push in turn, push the Republicans even further to the right <laughs> uh, towards, you know, the 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 more f fascistic authoritarian. Right. Um, and then Trump kind of made them more outright into that as well. Uh, so, I, you know, the, the GOP is is dead, but the GOP doesn't pretend to be the friend of the working class. Uh, they're they're very openly not the friend of the working class uh, or, or, or or immigrants or women or LG, name a minority. The GOP claims to not be friends with them unless they can tokenize them, so on and so forth. Right. Uh, but the Democrats do. They they placate to them. Claim that they're big and friendly and all that. And they're not. There's there's marginal differences between the two parties, but uh, but but not a lot, not a lot. I think they will say nice things about the LGBTQ community. I think they will say nice things about immigrants, but then they will just vote in line with the Republicans. So we can look at how the Democratic Party is dying in front of our eyes uh, by looking at one Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, has been steeped in in controversy for quite some time. And, and everybody fucking lost their shit over Andrew Cuomo uh, in uh, 2020 because he could form sentences uh, on television, um, full sentences, which was kind of the bar for beating Trump is, can you say sentences that sound like human sentences? And he was like, yeah, I can probably do that can i do that on television every day can i start by reciting what day of the week it is and spending a good solid 10 minutes talking specifically about the day of the week because that's something that he fucking definitely did i i called it cuomo and the covid that's the show which unfortunately you know i don't know if he's going to get season two for cuomo and the covid I don't know if he's going to get a season two. And that is uh, a shame because it's uh, that was a riveting program. You guys, I got to learn the day of the week. Uh, we counted. There were charts. Sometimes uh, he would uh, have a sandwich. Fucking riveting. Fuck Game of Thrones. Give me nine seasons of Andrew Cuomo sitting in front of six reporters that desperately need a story. Ugh. I will binge that all day, guys. Why do I need a plot and, and character development? He won an Emmy for those things. I, I think Holly pointed that out in Rockford. I'm going to double check. I think, Holly, you might have pointed that out. Yeah. Uh, oh, she put. He's a best-selling author. Yes, Holly pointed out that he's a best-selling author, but he did win a he did win an Emmy uh, as well. And uh, I I think I pointed that out in the in the pre the, the little pre thing that I do the pre roll thing. Uh, he won an Emmy. He has a best-selling book that he did not write, and now he and then and then we found out that he lied about nursing home numbers, and his reasoning was well Trump. Really? That's your reasoning for shaking the faith of people on information coming out of the government during a fucking worldwide pandemic? You're just going to lie about people's deaths? You're going to make people feel safer? For what? Trump? Because Trump might say something mean about you? Trump's going to say something mean about you regardless, isn't it? And the DOJ just accepted that as the, as the, as the valid explanation. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Is it? And then we find out that he's got sexual assault charges. And now the sexual assault charges are, uh, are, are, are you know, everything's kind of escalating in regards to that. The ironic thing is Biden fucking called him to, and, and said he, he wants uh, Cuomo to resign, which, by the way, he's not doing. And, and I think part of the reason why the Democratic Party is, is kind of throwing him under the bus is for that reason. I think if he would have if he would have uh, stopped talking about it, and kind of faded into the mist as I think the party wanted him to, 
that none of this would have escalated as much as it would have. I, I I hate to say it, but that's kind of what it what it would. You know, they tried to bury Tara Reed, and and then they shifted the narrative to say, well, Tara Reed is the only person that has any allegations against Joe Biden, uh, when there were tons of women that came out and they just ignored them. Right? They kind of didn't talk about them. There was a media blackout. But because he went out and made all these public statements that kind of blew up where he was basically like, I'm Italian. We talk by touching people. If you don't like touching people, then don't be Italian. Oh, this is not Italian. This is, I think this is how Andrew Cuomo talks. It's, it's a lot of shoulders. And it, you know, when he, when he does when he does Cuomo in the COVID, they said he's got to sit still because too much movement might, um, you know, really get in the way of the riveting plot that he is throwing out there um but that was his excuse by the way is he literally said i like it that's it's just the way i make people feel comfortable you you know what i've never felt comfortable is when someone touches me when i don't want to be touched when i get when i get like a random hug from somebody i'm a hugger i'm a big i'm i'm a fan of huggers uh um, you know I'm, I'm a hugger i'm a big fan of hugging and stuff uh, my, my cat will attest to it. I give him hugs, but when he, when he says enough is enough, guess what? I back the fuck off. Not Andrew. He's like, you will feel comfortable. And I will hug you because that's how you show love. You know how you don't show love by forcing it on people. So here's, here's a, a share post article that talks about this. This is a, uh, uh, this is from the, um, Report based in part on interviews with 179 individuals, 179 individuals specifically find that the governor sexually harassed a number of current and former New York state employees uh, by, among other things, engaging in unwelcome and non-consensual touching, as well as making numerous offensive comments of a sex a suggestive and sexual nature that created a hostile work environment for women. Uh, our investigation re revealed that governor's uh, the, the governor's sexual harassing behavior was not limited to members of his own staff, but extended to other state employees, including a state trooper on his protective detail and members of the public. We also conclude that the executive chamber's culture, one filled with fear and intimidation, while at the same time normalizing the governor's behavior, governor's frequent flirtation and gender-based comments, contributed to the conditions that allowed sexual harassment to occur and persist. That culture also influ influ influenced the improper and inadequate ways in which the executive chamber has responded to allegations of harassment. Basically saying he kind of normalized this thing. So within his administration, it was, it became okay to do this specifically for men, right? For, for dudes to go out there and, and do, and, and, and make sexually suggestive comments, touch women when they didn't want to be touched. Here's a, here's a, a, a really simple piece of advice when it comes to that, right? Uh, and and this is goes to all the dudes out there. Uh, just don't. Wow, it's really that easy, guys. Hey, uh, maybe don't talk about uh, a lady's ass when she's just hanging out at the bar. You can compliment people. I'm not saying don't compliment people, right? I I when I see my friends, uh, and I think they look really great, I go, hey, you look really great today. That is a fantastic dress. But I'm not saying like, oh, man, you can bounce a quarter off those tits or what? I don't know. Whatever the fucking creepazoid statement is. Don't do that. If, if I I've, I've done it to strangers when strangers have walked, I particularly like people's hair. I got great hair. When I see great hair, I'm like, hey, fucking super awesome hair. You're killing it with that hair. But I'm not like, oh, I would put that hair in a fuck. Ew. So simple piece of advice for all the dudes out there. Don't. You should not want to be an Andrew Cuomo. And the fact that this guy was was basically a, the Democratic Party god for a little while, the party's dead. The party's throwing him under the bus because they know that if they back this guy, just like they backed Joe Biden, 
there's that's it. They've lost a bunch of votes. Now pair that up with uh, the loss of Nina Turner, uh, which the only reason why, uh, well, not the only reason, there's probably several other reasons. One of the reasons why Nina Turner lost the election, the special election in Ohio uh, for uh, a seat in the House in Congress is because of the Clinton machine. They spent uh, millions of dollars advertising against her. Millions of dollars. We briefly mentioned this uh, on last night's Action for Assange vigil that I co-host every other Tuesday. Um, and it's a super fun time. But we briefly talked about Nina Turner because I think the results came out right as we were wrapping things up. But not only that, but I bet you a lot of progressives just didn't vote. People in my position, right? Like, I'm, I'm not big on electoral politics. But I will say, I will, you know, like people like India Walton in, in Buffalo. That's very hopeful. It's also concerning because she ran under the Democratic Party. And we all know that when you, you're a socialist or a progressive that runs within the Democratic Party, there's a higher likelihood that you're going to get co-opted by the party. That's just the reality of it. That's just what they do. Look at AOC. Look at the squad. I defer to uh, caucus leadership on Venezuela. I thought you were a socialist. Why would you not stand up for that country? They just extended the eviction moratorium. You know, it's a temporary 60 or 60 day extension. That's just for them to not be bothered while they're on vacation. You could have just canceled the rent. You could have worked on legislation to cancel the rent. Why do you get to go on vacation while people are fucking losing their goddamn houses? Right now, we should see a mass exodus of the fucking party. If people like Andrew Cuomo get to stay in their fucking seats of, uh, seats of power and continue to be the shit example of how you treat women in the workplace because you are in a position of power. And, and if it's okay for people that champion Medicare for all and, and a universal basic income and canceling student debt and, and for the democratic machine to attack them to ensure that none of those policies will ever be talked about in Congress, why are you with this party? If you if those, if those are any anything that you give a shit about, if you care about women's rights, if you care about uh, you know uh, sexual health, if you care about justice, if you care about universal health care, if you care about a universal basic income, if you care about canceling student debt, if you care about the environment, the Democratic Party is not the fucking party for you. It's dead. So is the Republican Party. They're both dead. The whole duopoly is dead. It's clinging to life. And look at the way it's operating. It's trying to squash out people that can actually make legislative change. And how does that legislative change come? When we demand it of them. They are our employees. We don't bend the knee to them. They have to bend the knee to us. They have to earn our votes. You don't just give them your votes and expect them to do maybe kind of sort of what you want. If they are not willing to do what you want them to do, then you don't give them their vote. It should be as simple as fucking that. The second this happened, the People's Party started surging uh, on uh, Twitter. Nina, Nina has endorsed the People's Party. I don't know why she chose... To run within the Democrat, I mean, I I, I kind of do. It's it's a it's it's all a money thing. Uh, I'm I'm going to release this podcast with Brian Becker in about a week or so here, and I talk about India Walton with him, um, and why she ran within the Democratic Party. It's it's the only way to play in the duopoly right now. The whole system needs to kind of be re reshaped from the ground up. So I, I, I hope I hope, you know, a bunch of you guys drop your registrations for the Democratic Party and register as something else. Push for the People's Party. See if there's a socialist party in your in your neck of the woods. This party is dead. It's never going to do anything for you. It never has. It never will. 
unless we the people demand that it does. And even when we do demand that it does, we I mean, 72 percent of people, according to a Fox News poll, want universal health care and they can't even fucking put it onto a floor vote because it's, quote, not the right time. We can get fifteen dollars minimum wage. Where? How did that? How did that work out? Did that happen? Because I don't fucking see people getting paid fifteen dollars minimum wage unless the restaurant or or the or the business or the establishment wants to fucking do that. The party doesn't work for you anymore. Parties never work for you. The Democratic Party, since its inception, has been a party of private industries since its inception. At least there was one point in history at the very beginning of the Republican Party where they actually stood by the people and listened to what the people wanted. They ran on abolition. They ran on – they were basically socialist farmers is what they were. Fucking Lincoln was in correspondence with Karl Marx. Holly, Holly says, uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is, this is why people like Andrew Cuomo. It's the gray hair, distinguished in dignity. Is, uh, well, I, I would use the word dignity very loosely in this situation. Uh, says, cancel rents and rents are too high. Yeah, and a lot of cities they are. And, and even Pittsburgh, which is r rather um, affordable to live in, the rents are starting to go up. Uh, and as you point out, Holly, we do live in a uniparty. Again, there, there are differences between the Democrats and the Republicans, but they're very marginal, small, you know, almost inconsequential decisions. Like they, like I said, they'll say nice things about gay people. They'll say nice things about immigrants and women, but they won't do anything about it. And that's, that's the problem that I have with it. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up. I know I said we'd wrap things up pretty quickly, but I, I still went on for uh, quite a bit of time. I, I wanted to cover these stories because they're, they're important and uh, all that sort of stuff. So uh, if you did enjoy this, uh, this, this, the, the content uh, that, that I'm producing, if you enjoyed the stories that I talked about, please do make sure you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure that you are subscribed to the page. Even if you're on Rockfin or Odyssey, uh, especially if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, make sure that you're still subscribed uh, uh, and like, still liked uh, on my page and, and still subscribe to my page and still getting notifications from me uh, because they often kind of kill those things. Uh, one of the ways you can circumvent uh, the censorship is by joining platforms like Rockfin and Odyssey. Uh, you can find me at rockfin, uh, rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, over on Odyssey, you can look me up at Krish Mohan Haha. Uh, if you are on stable financial ground, you can become a sustaining member uh, or make a one-time donation. Sustaining members get a bunch of cool extra stuff like free tickets to shows, uh, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, free tickets to virtual shows as well. So tons of cool stuff that comes through the... Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to figure out how to work Discord on my break. When I, when I take that take they take that time off i'm gonna try to find figure out how to use discord i'm gonna invite some folks into a discord uh the sustaining members into a discord and try to do like a little we, we discussed this a little bit uh on action for assange last night is i, I may, maybe try to do like a you know a, a member only kind of thing uh, like a light hangout or something to talk about wh whatever it is you want to talk about kind of thing so that that i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna figure it out I'm going to figure it out, you guys. Uh, but if you want to keep up to date with everything that's going on with me, uh, you can you sign up for my email list. It comes out once a week. Uh, it's got videos, podcasts, um, tickets to live shows, tickets to virtual shows. And sometimes I'm also going to be starting to write essays, um, you know, stuff that I didn't get to rant about or didn't get to write a dispatch or forkful about. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to work on one talking about, you know, the... The 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 the, the, the 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 sort of shift in accepting mental health in our society that I've started to notice, so, um, and and kind of how positive that is. So that's something that I'm, I want to write about uh, and talk about, um, and uh, and go from there. So so join the email list. It's krishmohanhaha.substack.com. Uh, and last but not least, live shows um, uh, are are back for right now and hopefully they will continue to stay back 
hopefully we'll 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 see the numbers go down and and all that good stuff. So uh, I'm I'm coming to Pittsburgh, Williamsport, Louisville, Lansing, Detroit, Baltimore, Washington D.C. I've I've got a date in Norfolk in November. Uh, I'm going to be adding a ton of other dates. Uh, I'm I'm uh, going to be uh, hopefully going to be getting something in Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Columbus, Minneapolis, Iowa, Iowa. Uh, Bloomington, Illinois, Kalamazoo, Greenville, Charlotte, uh, Atlanta, Greensboro. So those are the cities that I'm looking to come back to uh, over the course of the next few months. So uh, keep your eye out for that. Uh, best place to find out all that information is right on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, folks, you guys have been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for hanging out, Holly and Aiden. Thank you for leaving comments. Uh, and Josh as well, thank you for leaving comments. Uh, I very much appreciate it. And uh, till next week, I'll be back next week. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the weekend. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.